The first time I saw Citizen Kane was on Channel 9 in New York. I think I was 15 years old, and uh, it was at the age when I was beginning to associate certain names with films that I, that I liked. What Citizen Kane really did for me was to show um, what that name on the film did. In other words, Wells was the one through Citizen Kane to make me understand what a director did in a film, where he placed the camera, the energy of the film editing, the performances. All of this had a certain mark and a stamp that was uh, unmistakable. When I first saw it on Channel 9, it was edited. But I didn't know. It didn't matter. It didn't matter because it was so resting. It was so shocking. I, I really, of course, fell in love with that wide-angle lens, too. I, in movement. Constantly in movement. That was fascinating to me. And then I finally got to see it in the theater, at the Thalia Theater in New York, seeing for the first time the scenes that I hadn't seen on television, particularly the March of Time sequence. Use on the march! And when it came up was quite shocking, and how the March of Time sequence developed in, in the film. And I hadn't seen that before ever. And it was really, really extraordinary. It affected my early films. Before she divorced him. I made a film called It's Not Just You Murray at New York University. All the techniques used in It's Not Just You Murray kind of found their way again in Goodfellas, which all comes from the spirit of the March of Time sequence, the sense of just breaking the rules and, and stopping the movie and uh, throwing a documentary in the middle and giving you all that exposition and couching it in terms of uh, the excuse of it being a documentary that you see in the newsreel and, and uh, in the movie theater. As it must to all men, death came to Charles Foster Kane. You on the march! That's it. The other thing, of course, I noticed with long takes, he did it, well, of course, he shares the title card with Greg Tolan, director of photography and directed by, you know, are on the same card. He did it using uh, deep focal length lenses where everything seemed to be in focus from the foreground all the way back to the background. And I found that to be fascinating too and uh, constantly trying to compose, I find in my own mind trying to compose shots like that and of course uh, without those lenses, without that lighting, it's very difficult. I really enjoyed the montage of the film uh, a great deal. For example, in that opera scene, begins with her, her leg going across the frame, I think, and the camera is on the stage looking out to the audience, the light bulb dying out, and the uh, opera singer's voice fading away, and it's really a suicide attempt. And I think that's so wonderful. Our time is compressed in that. I also like uh, the scene in Mr. Bernstein's office when he talks about seeing the uh, young girl in a boat once in his life, and, and there isn't, hasn't a day gone by that uh, I haven't thought about that young girl. And I also like the line of dialogue which Bernstein says, listen, there's no trick to uh, making a lot of money if all you want to do is make a lot of money. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense, you know? That man was the biggest darn fool I ever met. Made an awful lot of money. Well, it's no trick to make a lot of money. All you want is to make a lot of money. Rosebud. Kane is a very important picture for the sound viewer. Wells was the one to uh, formulate the, um, the level to which films should aspire to, I think, or the freedom, the sense of freedom. I look at the Citizen Kane, I kind of think of Rosebud as a mystery thread, and somehow it's resolved, and it's resolved beautifully in, in, in the flames at the end. Looking back, at, I've seen the film now over the past uh, 20 years, 25 years, over and over again, 30 years maybe. Yeah, 30 years, over and over again. I guess the beauty of uh, the Rosebud idea stays with you is the, uh, the lost innocence, the melancholy, the inspiration that you had in you when you were young, and, uh, and how it changes and how it uh, survives or doesn't survive in your own estimation, and that, that initial spark that you want to hold on to uh, to the end of your life, um, and how it eludes some people, and how it seemed to elude him. Kane was a, a picture that uh, uh, made you think that anything was possible on film, and that's important, that's important, especially because film production is so hard, it's so difficult, that uh, it's very easy to be snowed under and to be, you, in yourself too, you get to a point where you're shooting something for so long and somebody says, I'd like to try something, I say, no, that's really hard to do, you can't do that, and you accept it, you know, at least, in that, when you, but when you see Kane, when, uh, luckily I was young enough to see Kane, you never accept any of that, you just try for it, and I think that's what uh, uh, 
the sense of ambition in the film was very strong, the ambitious sense of the picture. I wanted to be everything that film could be, stretching the limits of film. And I think that's what's always inspiring about the film. Six years ago, I looked at a picture of the world's greatest newspaper men. I felt like a kid in front of a candy store. Well, tonight, six years later, I got my candy, all of it. Wells was a, a beacon, in a way, and uh, uh, was someone you could keep looking towards. Someone whose work constantly surprised you and enriched you. Uh, it was like a teacher. Hello, Mr. Olson. She won't talk. The second Mrs. Kane, about Rosebud or anything else. I believe he's been quoted as saying that when he went to work on the film, he told the people working around him to do things they were told they could never do. And another famous thing I think he said, and that's something I always remember very, very clearly, and, uh, and when I'm in the same situation, I, I value it. He said, the thing I bring to this picture is ignorance. Because I never directed before on a film. So I don't know what can and cannot be done. It means, I, you know, I don't have to feel constrained by any rules. <laughs> 